You know why the doctors like to quote the statistic of penile cancer to um, support their contention that circumcision is a good idea at birth? It's because we're not nudists. We don't walk around without our clothes on. We wear all this clothing and underwear, sometimes tight underwear, and of course the penis can't breathe. It can't dry out. And so of course cancer is going to develop. What do you expect? <laughs> cancer is all about lack of oxygen. And so when we don't have fresh air um, surrounding the body for any significant amount of time, then of course we're going to have problems, have all kinds of things happen. I mean, true, you got the foreskin there and it keeps the head of the penis moist, and but it should breathe. It should be allowed to breathe. So whether or not the person uh, elects to sleep naked, you know, might be a factor. You know, nobody's done a statistical on, um, study to see exactly why does uh, having a force can increase the likelihood of penile cancer. Nobody's bothered. They just say across the board, oh, it's a good idea to remove the foreskin. Well, it might be a good idea, even better idea to remove the clothing. <laughs> Any kind of coverage whatsoever. Remove the blankets and sheets, you know, and keep the bedroom warm enough to be able to sleep without them. You know, there's a lot of different ways of, of spinning that if we bother to analyze it. And it doesn't take much thought to analyze it. The foreskin covers the head of the penis. What about the clothing covering the body? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Not too much intelligence. Just It's really we don't take the time to question their authority. We're too afraid to. Maybe because the insurance is covers our uh, medical expenses, so don't question the doctor's authority because in actuality, you if you do that, you are questioning the authority of the insurance company who pays their bills. Well, only because we have to go to the hospital to visit the doctor. The doctor used to visit us at home and the insurance couldn't cover that. Ha ha. <laughs> the, the nuns running the hospital, <laughs> they were footing the bill out of donations to the nunnery. That's what the hospital was running on, donations. <laughs> and any expenses paid out of your pocket. Oh boy. Life has changed in terms of who's in charge. When we don't pay out of our pocket, when we let the insurance company dictate terms, because they do have legal authority to dictate terms since they're footing the bill, ultimately. That is what's determining what our medical profession gets to do and, and does not get to do. So that's really, <laughs> we have a sociological problem. It is not a medical problem, but it ends up becoming a medical problem because then the union has to dictate terms of operation for the doctors as to how they conduct their business. And that's silly. It's truly silly that this that we allow money to dictate how our medicine is practiced. Circumcision, it's bad, it's wrong. And penile cancer is avoidable without the use of the knife. It's not necessary to perform circumcision. Come on, you know, it, but it takes some thinking to see the complex situation going on which has nothing to do with medicine, yet ends up becoming a medical problem, a medical a medical non-necessity. If I were to suggest a statistical study, may I suggest how frequently do men with uncut penises get penile, uh, penile cancer if they include a little borax in their diet? We know borax suppresses m uh, mold and it's great at eliminating moles, warts, from the body. They just dry up and drop off. Well, mold is related to fungus. It's not the same thing, but it's related. And so are moles and warts related to fungus and yeast. Well, since borax is so effective in that area, 
and we know that most of the pathogenic material inside a tumor is fungal in nature, although it's not the driving force, but I mean it's not the sole driving force, but it's in terms of quantity, it's the main driving force. But there are other forces such as viruses and uh, parasites and various toxins, both man-made and natural. They all contribute to the formation of cancer. But the driving force of the growth of a cancerous tumor, a lot of it is the pressure of the fungus inside the tumor. And if we can control just one group of pathogens that are related to fungus, namely mold, we might be able to control the growth of that tumor, even though the other instigating factors are still remain, you know, like poisons, for instance. Um, so that would be a statistical study, a controlled experiment. How often do men get penile cancer who regularly use borax in their diet? And it doesn't take much, a few crumbs hidden in like juice. You wouldn't even know it's there due to the acidity and the uh, sweetness of the juice. You wouldn't even know it's there. It's that simple. You know, th remedies like this, preventative measures, are so simple it's ridiculous to talk about cutting off the foreskin to prevent, a at birth, to prevent uh, the likelihood of penile cancer, a statistical likelihood at that, which is, and it's not a 100% likelihood either, later on in life. It, it makes absolutely no sense. It's utterly ridiculous. 